Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Um, I am presenting this presentation on the uh, novel coronavirus at the request of the um, Muslim Leadership Council of San Diego. Uh, I am a professor of epidemiology and public health at the University of California, San Diego. And um, I wanted to share some of the aspects that uh, are up to March 16th, because this is a changing situation and some of the data that I present can change uh, in the coming days or weeks and months. First of all, um, this pandemic is not the first. There has been several other um, pandemics throughout history. One of the most serious was the Spanish flu in 1918 that estimated has caused the death of up to 50 million people around the world or more. And um, it, so far, this is closest to the Spanish flu, but uh, there is agreement that it is not as aggressive uh, because so far the slow, uh, slower transmission and mortality indicates that it wouldn't be as bad as the Spanish flu. The coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, means the coronavirus disease 2019. And this is uh, how it looks. And this is the real picture here uh, under the electronic microscope. And this is a kind of a diagram showing um, its, uh, its features. This is the animal that is believed um, it caused it by humans, uh, basically in China, uh, coming in contact or eating it. Um, and uh, although it's banned from being um, uh, eaten or caught uh, by the government that uh, they smuggled it and they found that this might be, but it's still not decided. Uh, there is still debate about it. Um, other uh, viruses from this family is the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus or the MERS, and it has been known to be transmitted by the camel. Um, and then there is this horseshoe bat is transmitted, uh, the SARS, as well as the uh, civets, which uh, are related to the SARS. So um, again, what, these are called zoonoses, where the, the virus gets transmitted from the animal to the humans. And uh, all of these diseases are caused or believed to be caused by that transmission. This is a picture showing somebody sneezing and these are the numbers of a bacteria about a hundred thousand bacteria per sneeze over 200 million viruses they can travel six to eight feet and very fast travel 100 miles per hour so um, that's why these are the main sources of transmission the droplets is the main source of transmission of the virus once somebody inhales it and so the, the places of entry is through the nose, the mouth, or the eyes. And once it enters into the system, the virus is able to uh, migrate or mostly focus on the lungs. That's where it causes the damage. This is an electronic mic microscope of the uh, trachea, the lining of the trachea, which is the uh, wind pipe that we breathe through. And these are goblet cells and cilia. And these are responsible for protection, the goblet cells produce the mucus that protects our inside from the bacteria and viruses. And the cilia is responsible for removing any foreign bodies that go into the lung. The virus actually kills these two cells. And so that's how it can, uh, you know, avoid the defense of the, oh, the first defense, and then go and invade the lung and causes the damage. This is a very important concept here uh, I'd like everyone to understand. Once somebody gets that infection, it's, it's called here the onset, there is a period that they show no symptoms, but they have the virus, and that's what's called their carriers. The problem is that with the coronavirus, it is long. Instead of hours, it could up to be five days or more. And that the longer it is, the more it is going to, uh, people are going to transmit the disease without uh, knowing and up to 14 days some in some instances or even higher in, in a case in China, up to 19 days of a period between somebody got in contact with an infected person and then showed the symptoms. So 
that's where the problem is. Some people are not going to get any symptoms. They're going to just be carriers for a two weeks or so, and the body, the immune system kills the virus, and so they don't uh, have the symptoms. Uh, but then if they get the symptoms, then at least we know uh, that this is a potential person, so we avoid uh, contact. So the symptoms help us identify it. And then they seek care, they are diagnosed and hospitalized, and they either cure or, you know, there hasn't been any disability, but they could also die. Um, the symptoms are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. And again, they uh, usually two or four and up to 14 days after getting exposed, they can develop the system, the symptoms. The average is about five days. This is a, what happened in the Spanish flu during the Spanish flu uh, epidemic. And that's why it's very important to isolate ourselves and uh, do what we're doing now. And uh, uh, because in Philadelphia, they, the state, the governor or the state there ignored the cases of uh, virus and they delayed, you see, a delayed a period between the first case in September 17th on October 3rd. So they delayed it for a period of a few weeks before they did the uh, social distancing and closed uh, schools and so on. But it was too late. The virus has already spread and you can see the peak. These are the number of deaths that happened in Philadelphia. At the same time, St. Louis did a different uh, situation. The first case was diagnosed on October 5th and immediately they did everything of a social distancing, they closed churches, schools, and, and uh, as a result, they didn't suffer as much death, and the death was slower over a longer period of time, making it more manageable. So that's the purpose of the quarantine. Um, I wanna demonstrate this uh, quarantine is similar like a fire going through a field, and you can see the, the fire has burned and some patches didn't get burned, and basically, this is like a virus going through a community or a city. Some people get infected, others are not, and then it moves on. So the, the, if we can with, with, withstand that attack of the virus and, and by quarantine, then we are more uh, likely to avoid uh, everything getting burned. Um, like, like this case, this is a picture of a, another field where we have only um, a patch that it burned and everything else did not burn because uh, there was some material put so that uh, the, uh, the burn doesn't spread. And that is exactly what uh, we wanna do by quarantine. By those who get infected, do not communicate to the others and uh, burn the other field. In terms of who is at most risk, um, just to show that uh, according to the uh, seasonal death rate from influenza, it's around 0.1% in the US while for the corona, it is more about 2%. So it's much higher than the flu. And those who are elderly are the most likely to die. And the older the people, the higher at risk. You can see here the death rate um, among those who are 59, then 60, and then uh, 70 and 80, it increases. So those who are older are more at high risk. The males and the smokers as well, uh, this is from data from China, so they believe because males are smoking more in China, so they died more frequently. We don't know that yet, but those also with existing chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, respiratory illnesses, hypertension, cancer, or any other immunocompromised person will be at the highest risk. This is a map in the U.S. showing um, the spread of the virus uh, about a week or so ago. And now you can see this is more recent, just uh, uh, two days ago or so, it has spread more and more. And this is a picture of the global spread of the disease. You can see here the dark is where the disease is. And now, uh, again, this is two weeks or, or so uh, uh, ago, and now you can see it spread more. I'm gonna go back and forth. You can see more countries are getting this uh, disease. These three countries have suffered the most, China, Iran, and Italy. The reason is that all these three countries did not address the virus uh, immediately, and they left it, ignored it, um, and until it spread and was too late to try and control it. Um, this figure shows very nicely 
Um, this is the number of uh, infections. And uh, you can see here in Italy, the green is going up, 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 and it's still going. So there is going to increase. Um, and then in these other uh, European countries, they're all going up, except the, the purple, which is South Korea. You can see it's flat. South Korea did a very aggressive program that they, uh, they, were, they are testing about 20,000 people a day. They did very strict quarantine and they controlled it. So once they know somebody is, uh, is diseased, they, they have an app actually that, tell, that shows if they move out of their house and so on. So they did a really aggressive way. And that's why you can see the difference between this going up in Italy and this is kind of going more in control. It didn't disappear, but it's getting slower and therefore they can control it. Um, and this is exactly the goal of quarantine, uh, is that instead of having this big uh, a spike like we showed in, in Philadelphia for the Spanish flu, and the capacity of the healthcare system cannot deal with such a, a number, we are trying to flatten it so it will be more you know, slow over time and then the healthcare system can deal with it. Um, so what to do at, at home? Put supplies for two weeks of food, in case of a quarantine at home, if somebody is diagnosed and they have to stay two weeks in the home, um, soap is very effective for hand washing, hand sanitizer with at least 60% uh, alcohol, some tissues. Again, but I would say uh, hand washing with soap is as effective. Uh, of course, no handshaking, no contact, public places only go if it's necessary and very quickly don't kind of uh, hang around. Uh, face masks are not as helpful uh, they are most helpful for people who have the disease and also for healthcare providers. So uh, that's not a critical uh, thing now. And also good nutrition and multivitamins, vitamin C, fresh fruits, uh, black cumin in, improve, improves the immunity as well as other foods that could help the immune system deal with the virus. What are the action by health officials? They have to first try and identify the cases um, and then know where is the first case and anybody who got in contact and so that they map them and they control it so it doesn't spread because one person can deal, lead to hundreds of people. Um, and then find what the source, identify those at risk um, by testing them uh, and then quarantine them. Um, implement some prevention measures like what is being done. Uh, schools are shut down, others, uh, mosques, uh, churches, everywhere where there's public gathering should be stopped because that is where the transmission can happen. And also the most important is prepare the healthcare sector, including lab facilities for the diagnosis because that could be overwhelmed. And when they go into the hospital and more and more cases, the hospital cannot cope. Um, the most important thing is continue surveillance and writing reports regularly to the uh, public. So the four things that can be done is testing, so we know who has the disease, and um, that is not existing, at least in the US, while it is existing very well in Korea, that's why they controlled it better. Vaccination, that has not been developed. Treatment, that has not been developed. So we are only left with quarantine. And uh, you know, vaccination treatment will take time, even if they're working on it, it's not gonna go uh, be available in, in, in a short period. Um, just kind of finish with the uh, history of quarantine was uh, from the Italian Quarantana uh, uh, Giorni, meaning 40 days. It's interesting that they, this is where the word came when uh, they had to uh, have ships stay uh, 40 days. This is in 1348. Uh, uh, ships had to stay 40 days in the sea before they come into the bay in Italy so that the plague, if it was on the ship, uh, people will get cured or die um, and not transmit it to, the, uh, to Italy. Um, it's interesting now, Italy did not take that as seriously, unfortunately, and that's why there is now so much uh, spread and they are overwhelmed with, uh, with the disease. Interestingly, um, almost 700 years before that, between 706 and 707, it actually, the Muslim uh, Khalifa al-Walid built the first hospital in Damascus, today's Damascus, uh, then, and issued an order to isolate those infected with leprosy from other patients and put them in a hospital. 
So it's an isolation hospital that was uh, built there 700 years ago. And finally, our Prophet of Islam uh, said, if you hear of a plague in a land, then don't go into it. And if it happens in that land where you are, then do not go out of it. And that uh, is around 609, 632, um, uh, uh, that, that uh, kind of gives the, at least the Muslims the, the, uh, um, the kind of religious duty to be quarantined and not spread this disease to others. And hopefully everybody will be safe. Uh, this will take weeks, if not months, before we know where this is going. And so just be careful and, um, and hopefully everything will be uh, sorted out either by excessive, uh, more excessive testing, or if a vaccine happens, then uh, that will solve the problem.